Halifax Highlights. And here's your host, Louise Houghton. Hello and welcome to our Highlights show, which this time around includes the following. Flat out. Planking is an international internet sensation. Creative canapes. Telsa Bus is the queen of party food. Open air. Balcony TV is taking the music world by storm. First up, though, if you thought date stamps were something only found in an office, think again. Italian-born Federico Pietrella uses them in a completely different location, his art studio. Based in Berlin, Pietrella stamps his work every day, which creates a lasting impression on his finished creations. Creating art often takes time, and that is quite literally the case for these artworks. They consist of countless numbers stamped with ink. Federico Pietrella is the man behind the art. The Italian artist who moved to Berlin three years ago has been working with ink stamps for 15 years. I studied classical painting, but I was also interested in modern conceptual art. I was interested in finding a way to combine the two. Whenever I painted, I always used to put the date under the picture. And eventually, I got the idea to use dates to paint the picture. The pictures are based on his photographs of everyday motifs. All that Pietrella needs are ink stamps, acrylic colors, and plenty of patience. The artist works for up to two months on a picture, depending on its size. The 38-year-old always uses the date of the respective day. The pictures thus capture the entire time period from the first day to completion of the work. Time is a mysterious thing. For me, it's the most important thing from which everything is derived. Work, existence, life. When Pietrella has a work meeting or needs a break, he often visits Berlin's Café Einstein. He studied art in Rome and can now live comfortably from his work. His ink stamp images cost up to 20,000 euros apiece. The artist feels at home in Berlin. Berlin is simply the most interesting city in Europe, particularly with regard to contemporary art. Besides, it's simply really easy and nice to live here. Federico Pietrella's repertoire doesn't just consist of ink stamp pictures. He also creates abstract paintings, installations and sculptures. But the overreaching theme in all his works is time. Curator Manuel Wisniewski says that in addition to the versatility of Pietrella's works, the emotional components also appeal to him. The closer you come to the works, to the concrete elements, the dates, so to speak, the more blurry the picture becomes. For me, that's proof of the impossibility of capturing certain moments. This installation was recently shown in Berlin. It consists of different light projectors illuminating Pietrella's star-studded universe. The Italian artist is clear about what he wants to do in the future. Well, I want to create further ink stamp images. I want to do that all my life because then my life will be represented in a time frame. It's really a lifetime's work. But I also want to continue experimenting. Federico Pietrella can't make time stand still, but he can make it a true art form through his work. Now don't worry, your TV screen has not turned sideways. I'm actually lying down having a go at what's known as planking. Lots of people online have been trying it out in a lot more obscure places than a studio. It's become a big internet craze over the last few years, so let's take a look at some other people having a go before my stomach muscles give in. 
These people are planning to plank in Paris. Kasten Wilde planks whenever he has the chance. He's also been able to encourage some of his friends to pick up the unusual hobby. Together they make a planking session into an event that they photograph, later posting the evidence on the internet. At first you feel kind of stupid, and you wonder why you're lying on the road or on some object. You plank the object. You make yourself stiff as a board and lean on something. Once you've done it a couple of times, you get a kind of energy and get into the spirit of it. The more unusual the location, the better, because the resulting photo will later compete with countless others on the net. It's important to get the pose right, because the rules of planking are strict. Face down, arms touching your sides, your body kept rigid. And welcome to the befuddled looks of bystanders. Okay. You want to put yourself on display and see the reactions of people on the street or in public buildings. And you want to incorporate that into the whole planking artwork and the photo. It's a kind of feeling that ripens and develops inside you. And I think the public reception is very important for planking. Berlin-based sociologist Stefan Huma studies trends that gain popularity thanks to the Internet. The most important thing is that fads like this become possible through digital networks. Without the technical opportunities to disseminate them as well as to perceive them, they wouldn't exist. That means it's a typical event or phenomenon that very clearly has to do with the Internet. The phenomenon has spawned numerous variations. Horsemanning takes its name from the headless horseman in Washington Irving's Legend of Sleepy Hollow. In owling, people squat to resemble owls. Batmanning involves hanging like a bat. Tebowing pays tribute to the American football player Tim Tebow's habit of getting down on one knee and praying. And leaping into a pool in a relaxed manner is called leisure diving. Another fad is called money facing. The fact that new forms are always emerging has to do with people's needs to come up with something new, in the hopes that it'll be better than what has come before. That people will like it more, giving it a better chance of becoming popular. For a lot of people, the motivation is no doubt the hope of becoming well known. And of course, the fad has long since had its accompanying internet group. Some six months ago, Kasten Wilde started a site called Planking Love. Its membership is steadily growing and includes photographer Andreas Krüger. When I plank, it's to do something that doesn't really have a point, but it's fun to do anyway. It's not sports, it's not music, it's basically just totally pointless. But that's what's great about it. You get a result, and you experience situations you wouldn't have otherwise. Planking may have its skeptics, but one thing cannot be disputed. It is connecting people all over the world. Not through words, but through gestures and a kind of humor that transcends language barriers. I wonder how many of you will be trying that out before the end of the show. Moving on now, though, it's time to tantalize your taste buds with food pioneer Telsa Bus. Bus has a very artistic approach to catering and believes that eating should be about more than just the taste. It should be an experience. Now based in Berlin, she concentrates on creating those experiences at the popular Flamingo nightclub. Dance music and party food. Telza Bus came up with the idea of serving original and artistic nibbles on the dance floor. <laughs> Rosa tomatoes with peanut and mint cream. Turn of cabbage with vanilla and fried basil are just two of her creations. I want the guests to take an overall impression home with them. 
an impression that's made up of the venue, the music that plays there, the guests. These are the people I meet and here's the food. It's all intertwined. Artist, designer, entrepreneur. The 45-year-old in her Berlin studio. A fashion label is presenting its latest designs and tells the bus's nibbles must also be show stealers. Far from ordinary, her snacks are small edible works of art. Manufacturers invite people because they want to make an impression, not to satisfy their hunger. And it's very expensive to cater for 500 people. If they just get tomatoes and mozzarella or a quiche for the thousandth time, what kind of an impression does that make? Chef Richard Uschold also has a say. They're both on a tireless search for the best aromas, colors and presentations. Like their baked beetroot crisps. When it comes to combining flavors, they don't shy away. Roast a carrot parade with sesame, roasted tomatoes, black salsify, and popcorn. The Organic Glamour Collection is the name of her top-notch nibbles for party guests. Eating shouldn't be messy. Things shouldn't fall down or get stuck in your teeth. And no one really wants to be seen eating in public, especially not women. But this collection, one bite and it's gone. It's attractive and it looks elegant. The edibles are mostly vegetarian and wholly organic, reflecting modern trends. Even if they're not exactly filling. It's nice food. There are lots of different kinds to try. I think it's great to have vegetables as the main element if there isn't any meat. A candied banana? No, it's goat's cheese. Wonderful. Tazza Bus holds events for 50 people upwards and charges 30 euros a head for her food. Next, she plans to take other towns by storm with her fried capers and luminous carrot parade. And you can find out more details about her events online, which is where we're heading now. More and more people are using their computers to watch TV as well. In fact, a niche market has now developed for companies who set up their own internet TV channels. One such broadcaster is Balcony TV, which offers a new platform for musicians. They're filmed, as the title suggests, on the balcony. It all started in the Irish capital of Dublin and has now attracted fans and musicians all over the world. British punk band The Buzzcocks. Norwegian pop singer Marit Larsen. Grammy Award nominees Mumford and Sons. And British singer songwriter Jessie J. These are just four of the 6,000 artists who have performed on a balcony on Balcony ah! TV. Irish filmmaker Stephen O'Regan is one of the founders of the internet platform. He came up with the idea in 2006. It was a very sunny day, and it's not always sunny in Dublin. And we had this little balcony, and I stepped out into the balcony, and I said to. Uh, I said to my friends, actually, we've got a really great view on our balcony. We should use it more, because we were just putting rubbish onto the balcony. And uh, I said, what, what can we do? And I don't know where the idea came from, but we just came up with the idea of Balcony TV. And I thought the name had quite a good ring to it. So the very next day, we just got a camera, a microphone. We invited our friends up, and we filmed the first ever show. So far, he's filmed close to 2,500 concerts in Dublin alone. Instead of his own balcony, he now uses the rooftop terrace of a well-known pub. Sweeney's isn't just the venue for the music, it often functions as an office too, as Balcony TV is still driven solely by the passion of its makers, as well as the dedication of its fans who vote for their favorite bands. This helps many groups get their first big break. With more than 2 million clicks, Irish band The Script tops the Balcony TV charts. Now their song We Cry has also cracked the Irish top 10. Stephen O'Regan films Balcony concerts almost every day. This time, it's up-and-coming Irish group Little Green Cars who are climbing the six stories to the rooftop terrace. It's their third appearance here. Welcome to Balcony TV from Sweeney's Bar on Dame Street. Join us back on the balcony, our Little Green Cars. Hey. 
And you're here. And you find Every artist that's out there needs to have an outlet to sing their songs and express how they feel. And this is a really simple and huge way at the same time to do it over the internet. Hi. TV was founded in Dublin, but now the idea has caught on around the globe. Through a franchise system, concerts are now filmed in 30 cities, including Paris, New York, Mexico City, and Hamburg. The main criteria is that the balcony must have a good view of the city. This ensures a bit of local flavor in the cyber universe. We've had a lot of very high profile bands on our shows, and a lot of the comments are wow, we actually prefer the sound on their balcony TV performance because it's real. If you, can't play, if you can't play on the balcony, you're quickly exposed as being not very good. However, we've had a few bands as well that have been proven to be not very good because they need the studio, they need the microphones, they need all this kind of stuff. So I think um, people like seeing, taking away all the illusions and just getting real on the balcony. Balcony TV is currently negotiating with large corporations as they hope to eventually make money from the site. But many bands have already profited from their appearance on the show. Little Green Cars have just signed their first record deal. And I'm sure we'll be hearing more from them in the future. Now, when you're a student, you don't expect your graduation project will become your trademark as a designer. But that is what happened to award-winning Jolan van der Veel from the Netherlands. He came up with the innovative idea of making furniture using the natural force of magnets. And his work is now being displayed at exhibitions all around Europe. We dropped into his studio in Amsterdam to see just how he does it. These are the components for something called a gravity stool, an aluminium bowl, three magnets, a polymer mass and iron powder. Then the legs are created just by using the magnets. The shapes will come out of, of natural power are way more spectacular than I can ever think of. And especially Nature does these kind of things, as you see, in seconds to, to create this kind of objects. And if I should think about it or create, design that, it will take me probably a year or something to, to put that in a 3D modeling program. Whether it's a stool or a candle holder, after 20 minutes, the material has hardened. Each object is unique. The preparation is the most time-consuming part. In a family, you also have, uh, have to care for your kids to let them grow up. So that's a lot of work, I think. And I think this is the same in that you have to create really the, the, the good circumstances for that. And that's a big job. But then if it's there, then it can grow. Jolan van der Wiel wanted to harness the forces of nature for his exam project at a design academy in Amsterdam. That's how the gravity stool came about. Most of the 27-year-old's designs are clearly inspired by nature. I think uh, really important is in, with the design is to uh, leave a big part over to the fantasy of, of human. And that's what, uh, what happens in this object, I think. If, uh, if you look to this, you start immediately start thinking, oh, OK, how is this done? And, Ah, maybe it's done by, by this or this, and it, the shapes are weird. And I think if, if, if people are fantasizing themselves, then I think you can have a really interesting dialogue. The gravity stool will soon go on display at this gallery in Amsterdam, along with other nature-inspired objects. In our um, workspace, we also present works that are um, uh, uh, where ideas are derived from nature. And uh, in a way, uh, Jolan is growing his uh, in chairs in this uh, gravity tool. So that's really nice to, to see that happening. Um, his design fits very well with our, um, with our philosophy. 
At the end of January, Jolan van der Wiel was honored with a design award at the IMM Cologne, the world's leading furniture design fair. Dutch filmmaker Jenny Sipman has been with him over the past few months. She's been filming young designers in the first year after they graduate. And I saw the whole development from the, 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 you know, on the academy and his nervousness about whether or not he was being graduated. And now I see him developing really and growing into really an artist, a very interesting one. After this, I will develop a new machine, but also with, which makes it possible to maybe create tables, for example, there's much bigger things. But also, I want to create other technologies I think this is just a start of, of, of a, a lot of new production ways. Whatever Jolan van der Wiel tackles next, one thing's certain. His designs definitely have a great power of attraction. And we're staying with designs now for our next report, although they are on a much larger scale. The German team of architects called Graft have built up an international client base and gained celebrity recognition. We wanted to find out more about Graft's unique designs, so we headed over to their offices, located conveniently round the corner here in Berlin. This is what the home of the future might look like. In this Berlin loft, you can go straight from the couch to the bathtub. The team of architects from Graft specialize in flexible living spaces. Thomas Willemind is one of the architectural firm's three founders. Often we focus on creating diagonal perspectives to create a sense of distance and space. There are certain tricks that let you work on an apartment in a sculptural way, not just divide it up at right angles and use doors to go from one room to the next. Rather, it's about creating fluid connections. This creates a greater sense of space, no matter how big the apartment is. Graft was founded in Los Angeles in 1998 by Lars Krückeberg, Thomas Willemeit and Wolfram Putz. The three men had all studied architecture in LA. In 2001, they moved their company headquarters to Berlin. From their base here, they implement projects around the world. We follow the principle of grafting. In biology, grafting is a term used when the shoot of a desired plant is grafted onto another type. This brings genetic benefits, but most importantly creates something special. Bringing different things together is something that interests us, and that goes for various disciplines too. We draw no boundaries between art, architecture, interior design and product design. And here's the result. This loft in Hamburg was designed by Graft. In addition to private apartments, the architects have also worked on restaurants and hotels, including the W Hotel in New York. Hollywood star Brad Pitt was one of their first clients. He also commissioned Graf to build homes in New Orleans for the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Graf's ideas are in demand around the globe. The architect's current projects include a beachfront development in Dalian, a coastal city in China. A skyscraper in Dubai. Zero energy homes in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. and an apartment building in Berlin. To be important, socially relevant and interesting, architecture must excite and interest people. 
It needs to fulfill longings and say something about the way we live together or how an individual builds his own den. Graft has a staff of about 90. In addition to its offices in Los Angeles and Berlin, the firm opened another in Beijing in 2004. And the three founders from Germany have even bigger plans for the future. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Euromax Highlights. We'll be back again soon, so I hope you can join us then. Bye-bye for now.